Are you looking to analyze all your logs and events in one location? Or maybe you're just looking to learn about a SIM tool like Splunk to prepare for a job in IT or cybersecurity. Well, look no further. In this video, we're gonna walk through installing and configuring Splunk, which is one of the leaders in log and data analysis on a Windows system. But first, welcome to the channel or welcome back. My name is John Good, and on this channel, we talk all about cybersecurity. If you enjoy the content, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon so you get notified for future content. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to check out the description for more training and resources. All right, let's do this. In IT, cybersecurity, and even DevOps, one of the biggest issues that we have is monitoring our networks and being able to look at large amounts of data at once. If we have two computers, yeah, looking at the logs individually is gonna be possible, but it's gonna be annoying. If we have a thousand systems, it's basically impossible to do that and stay current with all the events that are taking place on those systems. Splunk is one of the leaders in helping us analyze large amounts of data in one central location. So it's a pretty good idea that you become familiar with how it works. We also refer to Splunk as a SIM tool, which stands for Security Information and Event Management. At a high level, Splunk operates basically like a database with its own specific language called Search Processing Language, or SPL. The better that you can navigate SPL and Splunk itself, the more desirable that you'll be to employers. There are even jobs that are dedicated to configuring and managing Splunk installations, and even if you had to use a similar product, you'll have a good idea of what's going on. The goal in this video is to get a free Splunk installation running on a local system and then show you some of the basic features that you should know. After this video, you'll be able to learn additional capabilities of Splunk or at least be able to talk about Splunk and how to use similar tools. Before we dive into the demo, I'm assuming that you already have a virtual machine or a system to install Splunk on. For this video, I'll be using a Windows Server 2022 virtual machine since we typically install Splunk on a server, but the process is gonna be the same on any Windows system. All right, let's begin. Okay, so the first thing that you have to do is you have to go to the Splunk website, so splunk.com, because we need to download Splunk. So we're gonna go to products, we're gonna go to Splunk Enterprise. All right, and then we're gonna click free trial. And you'll have to create an account if you don't already have one in order to download Splunk. And once you log in, you need to go ahead and download Splunk and get the correct download depending on which operating system that you're using. Okay, now that download is done, go ahead and open that file and we're gonna install Splunk. And we're gonna use a lot of the defaults in this, but of course, if you were in the real world, you might customize some of these options. We're gonna go ahead and check the box to accept the license agreements. And we're just gonna hit next. And these are the defaults that it's gonna use. So it's gonna run Splunk Enterprise as a local system account. It's gonna use this directory, and then it's gonna create a start menu shortcut. So again, we're gonna use the defaults. We'll hit next. We're gonna create a username and a password. And then we'll hit next. And we'll hit install. So that username and password is really important because that's what you're gonna to use to actually log into Splunk. Okay, so we've successfully installed Splunk Enterprise and we're gonna leave this launch browser with Splunk Enterprise checked and we'll hit finish and we'll open it with our web browser. Okay, do you remember when we were originally installing and configuring the installation for Splunk and we had to create a username and password? That's what we need to enter here so we can log in. We've now successfully installed Splunk and we've logged in. Now we need to set up our logs actually being ingested into the tool. So we're gonna go to settings and then data inputs. For this video, we're only gonna deal with local events. We're not gonna deal with remote systems. So we're gonna go under local event log collection. We're gonna select edit. Now we need to select the logs that we want to actually ingest into the tool. So I'm gonna keep it really simple and just do application, security, and system. Those are kind of the foundational logs. We'll scroll down and we'll select save. Okay, and the status should be enabled because that's going to ingest those logs. And we'll go back to apps and search and reporting. All right, in the search bar here, we're going to put in an asterisk or a star, and we're gonna hit return to search for all the events that it knows about. As you can see, it's starting to get events from our local system. Again, in this video, we're just dealing with the local system, not remote systems. So this would be a very basic kind of search. We can do all kinds of different basic searches in here. We can also get a little bit more advanced with filters 
and different queries and parameters and things like that. For this, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up our event viewer. So I've gone to the Windows menu and I'm going to open up event viewer. And I'm going to go under Windows logs and security. I'm going to right click this and I'm going to select clear log. And I'm going to select clear so it's going to clear the security log. And I'll show you why I'm doing this here in a second. So if we go back into our system here in our Splunk system, we're going to actually narrow this down a little bit and I'm going to show you how you can do this. So all of these parameters and fields, if I select one, so for instance the host, I'm going to left click on this and I'm going to do add a search. That's going to add it in this search bar. Okay, we're going to slowly narrow this search down. And then the next one I'm going to do is source. So we want it from the security logs. And then the event code I want to also add in here. So I'm going to add this to our search. And this did not add the full thing here, but that's okay. We're going to add an equal sign. And then we want 1102 is the event that we want to find. And we'll hit return. And that's how you can narrow down the searches. So we've only got this one particular event, which this event was the audit log being cleared. That's what we just did. Great, so that's an example of how you can search in Splunk for specific things. Now I'm going to copy this because we'll need it later. And then I'm actually going to select Create Table View. We'll skip the tour because again, I don't care about that. And this will actually put this into a table. And then on the left here, you can select or deselect different types of logs. So I'm gonna actually unselect raw. So it's not gonna give us all that information. And I'm gonna hit done. Okay, and as you can see, that gave us a table with the fields that we've selected. I hope you're enjoying the content so far. If you are, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Also check out the description for more training and resources. All right, let's get back to the content. Now I'm gonna to go to dashboards. And again, I'm gonna skip the tour. And I'm gonna select create new dashboard. And we're just gonna label this clear logs. And we're gonna create this with the dashboard studio. And we're gonna do grid. Select create. All right, so now we can create a dashboard. Dashboards are huge for analyzing data because we can quickly display certain things. And especially in areas like security or IT or any kind of data analytics, you're probably looking for relatively specific things. And this way, anything you're consistently looking for, you can just put into a table or a graph or something like that and put it on a dashboard so you can easily view it as it happens. So we're gonna add a chart here. We're gonna add a table. And we're gonna paste in this search with SPL, that query that we already found to find the event logs being cleared. So as you can see, this looks exactly like it did in our other search. All right, and we're gonna select apply and close. We're gonna give this a label. And we're not really gonna customize this at all, but you could, in the column formatting, you can add things. You can also remove things too. So if we go up here and we actually edit our search. I'm gonna show you how you can eliminate some of these columns if you didn't want them. So we can add a pipe, and then we're gonna type fields, a minus, and then we're gonna type the actual field in here. So BKT and CD we're gonna eliminate. We'll select apply and close. And as you can see, those columns are no longer in here. So you can totally customize it however you want to see it. And then we're going to select save to save this dashboard, save this table. All right, so that's saved. Now, if you go back under dashboards, so just clicking dashboards from wherever you're at within the application, you'll see that your dashboard is in here. So we're going to actually click on our dashboard that we created. So the clear logs. And this is going to be the table that we created. If we do actions and we select set as home dashboard, that's gonna be our primary dashboard. 
So this is just going to be on the search and reporting application. So having a dashboard like this is extremely useful. Again, you can look at very specific things that maybe you're constantly looking at or things that you need to view at a quick glance, especially when you're dealing with executive level or management level leaders. This can be great because you can easily present information in an easy to read way that they like to see it so they're not confused by all the nuances or smaller details of the application. It's just extremely beneficial to be able to create dashboards and easy to read information. So then if I go somewhere else, so let's just click anything. We'll just click data inputs under the settings just so we can get onto a different screen. And then we're gonna go back to apps and actually we'll click Splunk Enterprise to take us back to the home page. There is clear logs right on that main page. So again, you can do whatever you want as far as the dashboard and what you have in there, what kind of tables and stuff. But that's just an example of what you can do with dashboards to quickly and easily display information. So one other website that's extremely useful is this Ultimate IT Security. They have all the event IDs for Windows that you'll ever need. And then, for instance, we have 1102, the audit log was cleared. That's what we were just looking at. If we click on this, you can see it has even more details about specifically what it is. So if you ever aren't sure what an event ID is or you need something specific, this is a great resource to use. Question of the day, what are some important events or logs that we might wanna monitor in Splunk? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we walk through installing and configuring Splunk, which is one of the leading SIM tools in log and data analysis. Remember, knowing a tool like Splunk is extremely helpful in your career and will make you more desirable by employers. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more training and resources, and I'll see you next time.